correct pronunciation of my name. Uh, this is going to be a 25% Hungarian session, uh, where we all enjoy it. I'm going to introduce uh, an international project to you. This international project was carried out by Slovakia and Hungary, two neighboring countries that used to be one country. That's an important point here, right now, because many of the old maps were prepared uh, under the same guidance and supervision and then under the same theory. This part of work <coughs> is indeed. Now, as this project has a so-called a transboundary project that will be supported by the European Union, one of the good points of this union, uh, lasted for one year only, and uh, as you can imagine, the money arrived quite late, so we could start the project in India somewhat delayed but could complete it by the time uh, A consortium was formed by Hungarian and Slovakian uh, universities, higher education institutes, research institutes, and also private firms were included in this international team. The coordinator was given by Hungary, uh, one of our colleagues from a research institute. The objective was to set up an environmental monitoring system that uh, this is, or this had to be done for policy makers, decision makers, or those who were preparing the decisions. So it was something like an order from, from top to carry out this, uh, this job. What we had to do in international cooperation is to collect all kinds of data that we can read on the list here. And not only the data and information, but also process these data and information into a geographical information system so that uh, the, even those who are not experts in geography or geology or in any earth sciences can more or less with some help work with it and can interact with the with this database. Um, some other points of the, of the project objectives. So this was one of the projects that really integrated the knowledge of Earth scientists in these two countries into one really big system. And uh, this should be used, I say should be used, because I'm not sure that this will really be used because we have some uh, negative experiences in the past as well. So this should be used to model the possible changes. Not only the past should be known, but also what can be expected from various investments, either in infrastructure or in, uh, in, in, uh, in, in the economy or in tourism or in river regulations. It's also an important point to draw the attention, although this is the last sentence down there, but this is one of the most important points, at least for teachers, and I think this was a part of the mission of this international team, to draw attention to the outstanding <coughs> geographical, geological, botanical heritage, I mean values in the area. This part of the Ipoi River, a drainage basin in a way, is a, a very poor area both in Slovakia and in Hungary. So if you raise interest in the area, in fact we contribute to the developing or to the development of this region. Now you, you can see the map which is somewhat distorted on the screen but in front of me that's okay. So there should be circles showing the up there uh, the source of the river. And down there, the mouth of the river, where it meets with the Danube. Uh, the borderline between Slovakia and Hungary mostly runs along the Danube River and the Ipoi River, but completely. Half of the river is the border river between Hungary and Slovakia. Some geographical description of the area, so as to have an image of what, we were, what I'm talking about. 5,000 square kilometers of drainage basin. This is the size of a well, mm -hmm. 10 times bigger than Budapest, well, for instance. Or it might be 10 times bigger than Bucharest, probably. So it's quite a big one. 
and uh, the water basin or the drainage basin in one third belongs to Hungary, but two thirds goes to Slovakia. Um, the discharge is really changeable. When in a low water, and I will show you some pictures of that, in low water you can hardly see anything of the river, what with one and a half cubic meters per second. There's, there's almost nothing for a river. But uh, in high water, <coughs> it's flooding almost 500 cubic meters per second of flowing, which is more than three times higher than the low water level. This is really a river in, in high water. Quite a dangerous river has a uh, settlement on the floodplain and there are some 300 settlements on the, on, in, in, in the basin. The, many of them are really endangered, particularly by the May-June floods, so with this time of the year, particularly when it meets the flood of the day as well. well floodplains, the wooded hills, beautiful hills, you will see some pictures. Uh, here we can see the the river when it's only a stream. It's just a few meters here. This is at, uh, uh, roughly about the middle course of the river. And on the next picture, you, you can see when it's high water, the flood water. And you, you can see when it has flooded the part of the, of the basin. But anyway, almost all of these pictures come from my own uh, Say activity as the team, the Hungarian and Slovakian team, naturally had to do it several times and they also went on to the field to have real field experience and to, to feel the, the, the river and, and the basin and the landscape as well. This is something very important. Sometimes, recently, well, this is a deviation, uh, I, mm. I had to read some some dissertations on, I mean, MSC thesis, MSC papers, where I put the question to the candidate, to the student, that how many times have you been on spot on, on, on the land? And he said, no, we haven't been to. We, although that was only just 10 or 50 kilometers away from the place. So I think that, unfortunately, many, many students do not really like the landscape, even if they study geography or something related to geosciences. Now, just a few more data and I'm going on to the details that the Department of Cartography and Geoinformatics had to do. I belong, I belong to this department. Uh, we had a, a part-time job in this uh, international project. Um, it's also important to know that a uh, great part of the area belongs to an international geo park since last year. And in Europe, this was the first international transboundary geo park. This was not easy to push it through that two countries nominated one area. Well, it's because uh, there are also folk <coughs> traditions, living folk traditions, interesting folk architecture, interesting landscape, interesting history, interesting cultural life. So, this is what made this area really. Uh, specific and of course with lots of so called geo heritage values. <laughs> As I said, this Hungary Slovakia used to be one country, therefore on the two sides of the river there are minorities, sometimes just in certain villages, sometimes they live in block. So there were also some, some 40 50 bridges, bridges on the river up to the end of the First World War. But after that, after 1920, almost all of these bridges were destroyed. There was no connection, no link between the two countries, only very limited. Now they are, there is, an, there is a intergovernmental agreement now to rebuild these bridges, and every year two or three bridges have they gradually open and, and open. So this also explains why this area has been dealt as, a, as one geographical unit. So, and one of the destroyed uh, bridges, you see the pillars are in good condition, but nothing to walk on. Um, the protected houses or dwellings are the cut in endophyte tough. It's very interesting, almost whole streets are cut into these endophyte tufts. 
and uh, the vineyards. It's going to be a, a well-known uh, uh, wine farming area as well. Um, and then we can see, of course, the white plot plain with high water. And the cartographic tasks. Um, well, the inspire directions couldn't be neglected, of course, which is a, an internationally set directive. But what we had to do in the Department of Cartography at my university in Budapest is to process all the historical, geographical, but not also, but not only, but also <coughs> technical, or, uh, uh, linguistic values or linguistic data, or data on uh, on uh, earthquakes or on the changes of the administrative divisions. So all kinds of information were collected and entered in Hungary, my department, uh, with the cooperation of colleagues from Slovakia, the supporting of the data. Uh, we didn't have to find all these data because there were uh, uh, professionals in the team who gave us the data and we many times only had to enter or to adjust the data because they came from various times with various projections with various legend, with various details. So what we had to do is to standardize then in, uh, put everything into a computer. One of the major problems was that these maps were, particularly those after 1920, were made in different projections. And the first, second and third military surveys in the past 200 years were also made in various projections. What's more, the first one had no projection at all. So what we had to do is to find uh, control points in these maps, uh, in these very old maps, and uh, identify them in recent maps, and somehow, so to say, to distort, to geo, well, distort in inverted commas, to, this is what we call georeferencing, uh, these maps so that the old maps, the new and the new maps, should be in harmony, also in scale, of course. So scale, legend, and so forth. Oh. to the settlement things was a, was a difficult job indeed, because there are many settlements that have their name, well, of course, in Hungary and Slovakia, but many of them have also Serbian or German names. We collected them for the past 200, 250 years from various sources, because if you find some reference, in, a, in an old book or on an old map, you should know that how to correspond it to the present place or to the, to the present name. So, gathering all this information really needed one year, and we also had to involve, of course, students. Uh, I wouldn't say a large number of students, some five or six students were working with us in, uh, during uh, years. Also, thematic. Thematic maps were considered, soil maps, forest maps, for instance, or land use maps, naturally. And well, translation into English and German, that's not a problem because this is right on the, on the home page. Now, if, uh, an example, two examples of the place name changes or place name uses, well, you can see up there, you, you may not know if you do not live there or you do not have a good gazetteer. Because in fact we had to compile a gazetteer with some 600 names. Well, anyway, there are only now 300 settlements because we also collected those names that do not exist any longer or being merged into another place. So, Dodd Bergen, Berschen, Deutsche Pilsen. Pilsen is a promising name, but it, it was a, a, a mining town and it were a mining place. Now, although we did everything uh, to fit the maps, but this wasn't always successful. There were minor uh, say contradictions when we, when we put them uh, side by side. Where you can see the circle, kind of circle up there. Uh, you can see that the coordinates of the lines do not really match. Well, this is okay, anyway, but not perfect. Uh, so we spent a lot of time on, on making it perfect, but this is what we could do. Or another example, when we they placed the, the maps on, on, the, uh, on the, well, this is the Google background behind, uh, the map <coughs> that we used as a basis uh, well, 
until which every map or map source, every map source was uh, so to say adjusted or transformed. The UTM projection, of course, um, and used the datum of 1984 the, uh, for, for the ellipsoid. Um, well, here also you can see a bit down there uh, a few mismatches. Now let me show you three pictures or three pairs of pictures from the three military surveys and uh, which go back, uh, which, yes, the first one 230 years ago or so, at least in this area. It uh, shows uh, on the left uh, an extract from the map itself and on the right some thematic content. I think this thematic content is forestry in built up areas. Um, well, we made several layers, lots of layers, information layers. And I just uh, uh, put here uh, just this one, but there are hundreds of thousands if you really want. Um, this one is from the second military sur uh, survey, and uh, this one is from the third one. So you can see how the built up areas grew and how the forest is. Uh, Appeared. and uh, they were all reduced to transform to 25,000 in fact uh, so that these maps can be uh, overlaid easily um, after the transformation of the projection um, another example that we have in the database is the earthquakes in the region well these are simple dots but we also have the data uh, back, to, back to the 5th century when we have the first written documents of the earthquakes in this part of, of Europe. We also have the data based on the epicenter, uh, the depth uh, where the earthquake uh, of, of the epicenter and also of the magnitude of the, or the estimated magnitude of the former landscape, uh, earthquakes on the Richter scale. Um, that's a good example of how to show you how much the river bed of the Ipo River changed in the past few, well, in, in the past, up to, up to recently. And this really uh, justifies why we made this kind of database for those people who have the money and who have the power to bring decisions on the development. Of the region. Now, the results. Well, the results is a kind of a summary of what I have said. Well, one of the first two, um, one of the first points in this type of results is that an international team was organized to, with the experts, professionals of these two countries, and prepared an inventory not only of the data or information, but also of the literature of the. Uh, of the sources that can be now easily exchanged with each other. And as uh, you can see there, the database is, uh, it is offering uh, a large set of information for analysis. And, uh, and you can model the expected changes. And you can test what could be the outcome of long-term decisions, or possible or probable outcome of long-term decisions. I've got, well I say vision, but might be dream would be a better one, although they are synonyms I think. So the first uh, is that these, uh, this would really, this GIS will really serve as a basis for planners and decision makers. And mm. Another point to to raise the interest and to get the people aware of the dual heritage of the region. Most guides who, who lead tourist groups always tell the group that the builder, the painter, the constructor and so on, but they very rarely draw the attention of their audience to the geological, geomorphological, botanical heritage of the region. I think this part is very much missing from their curriculum. <laughs> and uh, 
cotton point, this would also give a good job for cartographers if the project objectives and project results could be also transformed to other areas and do the same environmental monitoring system for our, for other river basins and this is something that cartographers, geographers from another country can work together and set a good example of international cooperation. Thank you.